Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here, and I've officially graduated from uh, University of Iowa, so I'm repping the Tippy Analytics alumni shirt. And for this week, we're actually not going to look at the Tidy Tuesday data set. I believe the data set is a volleyball data set. However, I don't really know a lot about volleyball, and uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to build off of our previous data set that we created, which was the UFC data set. Um, so I think it'd be cool to make a dashboard specifically in R using R Shiny. Um, one of the main questions I'll you probably ask is, well, why would I use R to make a dashboard when I could use like Tableau or Power BI? Um, and that's a pretty good question because, to be honest, if you're just doing basic reporting and visualizations and your data set is static or in a uh, a database, it's probably easier and probably better for the user to just make it in Tableau because it's easier to give to people and all that, all that stuff. Also, the filter functions are much easier to implement. But one good thing about our shiny though, is you get more, um, you get more data science tools, right? So you can add trend lines, you can really tweak those plots. Um, and you can also do kind of add whatever you want. It's, it's kind of open source. So there's a lot of cool packages that you can add onto our shiny. Instead of using base R shiny, we're actually gonna use the shiny dashboard package. And what's great about the shiny dashboard package is because is it adds a lot of, um, it kind of gives us a template to start off of to really make a, a great looking dashboard just out of the box. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna load up, um, where's my, where's the thing? I already have a R shiny app right now. I'll load it up, you just do um, file, new file, and then shiny web app, you do that. I already have it because I actually added in a, uh, we added, I added in the data sets we're actually gonna use, okay? So I'm just gonna erase these comments. Um, it always comes with these comments and we don't really need it, to be honest. Uh, let's see here, what else do we need? Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Okay. So this is the main skeleton of the R Shiny um, dashboard. However, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load in the tidyverse. Uh, we're gonna load in the Elo package, and we're gonna load in Shiny dashboard. Okay, and then we're also gonna load in our original Elo data frame, Elo df.csv, and we're also gonna load in this other one called. Um, the ELO um, CSV. And if we actually look at it, let's see if let's hopefully it'll work. Yeah, so our df.csv is our is that you know base case um, tidy format of our uh, ELO data frame. Right? Um, ELO ELO DF, right? It's it's the classic uh, I mean, df or elo.csv is our base case tidy format, but what we're mostly going to be using is our elo df, which is really the simplified version to actually create our elo um, scores, where it just has a match ID, a date, a fire opponent, and the outcome and their weight class. Okay. So first, what we're going to do is what's interesting about um, Shiny Dashboard is it actually doesn't use the same fluid pages. It uh. It uses instead um, just a dashboard dashboard page. So this is our actual UI, um, and then we can add in our dashboard header. Um, we have a dashboard uh, sidebar, a dashboard uh, body. Okay, and that's it. So it looks a little confusing, um, confusing, but it's not too bad. Um, cause the majority of the stuff is actually going to go into our dashboard, uh, body. So for a dashboard header, we're going to say our title is equal to, uh, UFC dashboard, but, but dashboard. Okay. And we'll just run this app, save it. And what do we see here? We have a base, um, UFC dashboard. Okay. So. One thing that we got to do is we got to start adding some, uh, some plots, you know, we, we want to start adding some stuff. Um, so what we're first going to do is actually add, um, some tabs. Okay. And right now I think we're only going to do a two tab dashboard. 
So for the dashboard dashboard sidebar, I'm going to add a uh, some I'm going to use a sidebar menu function, and I'm going to add some tabs basically using the menu item. So each each sidebar for the sidebar we have a sidebar menu, and the sidebar menu has a menu item. Okay. Um, so we're going to add a, a thing called a weight class, um, and then we're going to call this the weight class tab. So this is basically the title of this um, tab. And then we have kind of like an identifier for the actual tab name. Okay. And then what's cool is we can actually add an icon. Um, so for this, we're going to, <coughs> we're going to say icon equals uh, dashboard. And they just use um, this one website's, uh, oops, this one website's uh, kind of like characters. So you can just specify dashboard. Okay. Let's see what it does. Okay, so now we have weight class, and you have this cool little dashboard icon for free. Okay, so we're gonna add another menu item, and this is gonna be our head to head. Um, our tab name will be uh, head tab, and then our icon will be uh, icon, and we'll say dashboard. So when I was originally planning this dashboard, um, I thought it'd be cool to just see. Okay, we can kind of select a weight class, um, select a weight class, and kind of see the 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 history of the weight class ELO rank ELO his like the ELO distributions. We can see the uh, his, uh, ELO time series, ELO distributions, and maybe like a top five um, fighters for that weight class as a table. And then we'll add like a little slider that where you can kind of select um, the weight classes. Okay, so it's gonna be a pretty basic thing. There's only gonna be about uh, I guess two plots, one table, and like uh, one filtering. So we have that. One thing we got to realize though is, okay, so we have our sidebar menu, but we also need to add in um, some items in our, in our, uh, in, in our dashboard, right? So that's where we go to our dashboard body. Okay. And this is like the, the meat and potatoes of the actual dashboard. So for the dashboard body, we actually have to add the tab items, okay? Because we have multiple tabs, and then for each, um, and then for each tab, we have to specify a tab item, and then specifically the tab name, so we can specify like, okay, so in this tab, we're gonna, um, in this tab, we're gonna add the plot. So first, we're gonna kind of work on the weight class tab. Okay. And then now we can start putting in our plots. Okay. But I'm going to also add another tab item. In this case, it'll be tab name equals, and then it'll be a uh, head tab. Okay. So all of our plots, so we'll go into the, into these, uh, these tab items. Okay. So each, each tab item is essentially the, the tab page and the content. So we just say like, Oh, like I want a, a plot right there, a plot right here, yada, yada. Okay, so we have that. Um, we also have to start making our plots, but first, um, we can kind of look at our ELODF, and we see that we don't have, we don't have our ELOs, right? Because what I thought would be cool is, what if we also add not just filtering for the the weight class, but also filtering for the um, specifying the K value of of the actual ELO system, okay? So what we're going to have to do is basically um, have a function that will create our ELO data frame with a given K, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of like, uh, uh, we're going to prototype it first. So we're first going to do ELO run winner to fighter plus opponent and K equals, we're going to say K equals 21st data equals ELO DF. And for this, we're also going to arrange it by the um, fighter and the date. So that way we can add anything we want to it at the end. Okay. So we have that, we have an object. Okay. But we need to create this into a uh, table so as that table or as underscore table. And now we have this thing. Okay. So there's multiple ways that we can actually do this. Um, one thing that I would say is we could do um, 
a pivot longer. So we say pivot longer contains A, B, and then minus yada, yada. Um, but I think I'm going to just do it a classical route first. So first I'm going to have to C bind the uh, ego stuff that I want. So arrange five, oops, five, fighter, fighter and uh, date. If we actually look at this, so Aaron Brink are, are these three. Okay, right, so we can look at this and we can see, oops, let's see here. See that it, it matches up, right? It, it's gonna match up. So we can comfortably see behind whatever we want, okay? So in this case, we're gonna select the, uh, eh, uh, we're gonna select the uh, uh, match ID, right? So now we have a match ID for what we want. Okay, that's great. Um, additionally, we can see, um, uh, we can we can just have this as our our data frame first, okay? So we have that. So we'll call this our temporary data frame. And then in our temporary data frame, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to uh, R bind them together. But in this case, we're gonna have to select you know team A's data, right, with the match ID. Okay. So how are we going to do that? First, we can do this. Um, we can say, we can actually, is that, let's see here. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Additionally, what we need to do is we need to select the relevant stuff. So we want team.a, team.b, um, elo.a, and elo.b, and match ID, right? Team A, what is it? Team oh, I have to have capitalize these things. So team A, team B, oh, elo dot A, elo dot B. Okay, so we have our temp data frame. We got that stuff. Because if you think about it, we we we're not gonna plot out the updates or the probabilities. We're just gonna plot out their elo. Okay, so we don't need that stuff. Um. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the select at and then bars contains and first we're gonna do the dot a okay so we want bars containing um a and we also want the uh, match id right so that's all we got we got basically uh well our elo and our match ids and we're gonna do a rename Oh, rename all dot funds equal oops, equals function x acr replace x dot a and boom okay so if we look, go back up uh let's see here we have our match id and stuff like that okay we're gonna do the same thing but instead of dot a dot b and we have that Okay, so once we do that, we also need to R bind it. So R bind, boom, 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 and we have our full data frame. Okay. Additionally, what we got to do is left join our DF, but we'll select the. Uh, uh, let's see, what else? What, what do we need? Probably date fight. We probably want the fighter date. Uh, weight class and match ID because we know we need the weight class and since we're doing a time series we should we should also join the date okay so we got that and we'll say oops, by equals C fighter and uh, match ID does that do fighter is missing why is it saying fighter is missing L H oh what what is DF saying Fighter, select fighter. Okay. Oh, it's saying it's team. Interesting. Okay. So we'll just rename uh, fighter equals equals team. Right? So now we have our fighter data frame. 
There we go. Then we can do a left join. And we have what we wanted where we have our ELO. We have our match ID, we have our day and our weight class. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make sure we have, uh, I'm going to look at the structures of it. Uh, fighter is a character. ELO is a number. Match ID is int. That's fine. Date is a character. So what we're going to have to do is mutate the, the date. So uh, mutate date equals as dot date date. Okay. So now we have our data frame with a given. Um, okay, we have all that stuff. Okay, and yes, this is extremely messy, but luckily we're gonna put this into a function and we won't have to really look at it anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Boom. So what we're gonna say, we're gonna say create, create ELO data function and we give it a K, right? Because um, we wanna generate this data frame whenever uh, with a specified K. Okay, so K, and then we have K equals K, All right? And we can do that. We have it. So now we have our function. It'll actually create our um, ELO data. So let's let's just try it. ELO data, and we'll say uh, twenty, and it gives us a K of tw uh, uh, our data frame. Whereas their ELO, the match ID, the date, and the weight class. I uh, great stuff. And what's cool is we just kind of have this in a little small function, okay? And that's basically it. So we kind of did most of the actual logic. Now what we're gonna have to do is create some uh, some charts, which is probably, probably the most fun part about it. So what are we gonna do? First, let's create a, uh, uh, let's see, what else could we do? Well, how can we, do? let's start creating our filters first, right? So with the filters, we need to figure out how to do a weight class and a K. So I think the simplest thing to do is probably the K. Okay. So let's do it. So for here, we have our weight class tab in our tab item. Um, everything that you put into a, a dashboard for shiny dax, uh, shiny dashboard must be a inside a box. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say slider input. Um, because I think what would be a good idea is just kind of have like a slider where the person doesn't have to like type it in. They just kind of have to drag, click and drag, right? So we have a slider input. Our input ID will equal um, is equal to, let's say, all, all inputs, we'll start with a V first. So V, um, and let's say K, and for this um, um, K value, we'll say it's, it'll be for the uh, weight class tab. And the weight class tab is one. So V underscore K underscore one. Okay, and then our label is a K, K for ELO. Our min will be one, our max will be yeah, 100, and let's say our default value will be 20. Okay, so now we actually have a, uh, a, what, oh. we have now a slider. And if we look at it, we can just run this. And we have a slider where we can just kind of drag it around and this will specify the K. Okay. So what else, do, what, what else can we do? Well, what we can do now is we can start making a table. Right, let's, let's just find the top five fighters for um, the K. Okay, so uh, in this tab, we'll go to our box. Let's see our box. Okay, box, and we'll say uh, table output. And this table will be the top five table. Right, seems pretty uh, standard, top five table. Okay. So since we have our table named, we have to actually put an output. So output top five table. And what we have to do is render the table. Okay. Mm, yep. And then what we're going to do is we're first going to generate our data frame, right? So we'll say um, table DF and we'll say uh, uh, create ELO data, right? So create ELO data. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the user specify the K. And this, so we have to give it an input. 
So the entire idea behind our shiny is just inputs and outputs, right? So, and it's mostly just inputs. We're mostly specifying the inputs. So for our data, we're going to give it an input and the input is user specified where it's input ID VK one, where we're saying, okay, we're going to create a table or, uh, uh, we're going to create our ELO data using a K of, of 20 as a default. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say table DF, uh, group by fighter, uh, arrange by descending order of, uh, fighter ELO. And then what we're going to do is slice one on group. And then top n fighter elo n equals five arranged by fighter elo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, select na uh, fighter fighter elo and then mutate rank equals row number. Okay, row number. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so. You see how like I'm not really testing it. I'm just gonna test it out with using the actual um app. So I'm gonna run the app and it says fighter elo is not found. Interesting. Why is it not found? So let's go here. What's it called? Elo. So it's called elo. My bad. So what we'll say is uh elo. Range by elo rank. Boom. There we have it. We have our ELO. Um, it's not sorting correctly. So what we're going to do is uh, select arrange descending order. Boom. Okay. So we have that. Boom. One, GSP, John Jones, Anderson Silva, 20% Don Cerrone. Let's see if the actual K works. So K equals 20. Let's say K equals 66. See, it's, see how it's changing? The, the E was changing. Our 91, Tony Ferguson is now on top. We do like nine. So you can see it's changing. It's reacting and it's actually pretty fast. Um, the E load um, package is pretty fast with creating it. So I was comfortable with just always creating the new data set. If you really wanted to optimize performance, we would just kind of have it in here and not have it in each uh, uh, rendering. But that's fine. So we're gonna do that. Um, now, what I'm thinking about, if we look here, is I kinda want the table to be kinda like over here, and I want these uh, 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 function uh, filters to be kinda right here, so then, so then I can see these two main plots, where I wanna see a time series plot and a distribution plot right over there where I can just filter out K, where I can change the K, and also I could probably change the weight class, right? Because we want it to be by weight class. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so first, let's make a, uh, let's make let's make the, uh, the time series plot. Let's make the time series plot. So I'm just gonna put this on top right here and say box um, plot output, and we'll say uh, ELO time series time 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 series boom so what do we have to do we got to make a, another output so output uh elo time series time series right elo elo time series and then render a plot and we'll say elo time series df uh create elo data Input VK1, ELO time series DF, and then we'll say uh, uh, GD plot. Actually, hmm. you know, what I'm, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to include the top five fighters. So I'm going to say top five fighters, five, top five, top five fighters. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna paste this thing in, group by top n, and then we'll, what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna say uh, select name, uh, select fighter, right? Because that's that's what we want. 
we'll get it. Or we'll, we'll just do column names. Fighter, right? Because we want the fighter. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use our ELO time series, DF. Uh, and we'll say, we'll just do a, a simple ggplot. So ggplot data equals ELO time series, DF. AS x equals date, y equals ELO plus geom, uh, well, we'll do geom point plus geom point again. But in this case, we're actually going to say a uh, data equals um, ELO time series DF uh, um, oops, D oh, filter and we'll say the fighter is in our top five fighters uh, uh, tab, uh, data frame, right? And then what we'll say is AS X equals date, Y equals um, ELO and color equals fighter, right? Let's see what, let's see what happens. Okay, so right here we have it. And you can see these are all the fighters and we can see kind of like the name, the, the colors of, of the top five fighters and where they were at. Okay. Um, I'm going to add just one more thing. So theme legend dot position equals top. So that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, let's see here. So we have that, we can kind of change it, right? See how the fires change? Okay. Great, we have that. And now um let's do a fighter distribution. Okay, so let's say let's do right here. Um box plot output fighter. I'll say elo dist. Elo dist. Right? Okay. Put it down here. Output ELO dist uh, render plot. Okay. ELO dist create ELO data. Oh man. Boop. And then this is gonna be a simple one. So we'll just say uh, GG plot e data equals ELO dist. Um, as x equals elo plus gm and we'll do a we'll do a histogram first right that makes sense run it um yeah easy peasy you can see it i kind of hmm. yeah cool cool it looks, it looks really good okay i kind of like the uh the slider output to the right so i'm going to put this thing uh Above, uh, below it or whatever box two boom boom and then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add in oh we're gonna actually add another one too so in this case we want to add a weight class so there's a there's a few ways we can do this okay so we, we could just do a uh um what is it called it, it's um uh, a, uh, a select input thing, or we could do a U render UI. So that way our select input can be reactive to other filtering. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna do render, uh, actually a UI output, and we'll say uh, weight class, oh, we'll say V weight class one, V weight class one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of our, our filter options or filtering options right here. Okay. So output V weight class one render UI. Okay. So now I'm going to have to go. Okay. Cool. That looks good. I'll do, I'll do the, actually I'll do the, uh, I'll do the, the, the cleaning later. Okay. So render UI. So what we're going to do is select input. And then our input i input id equals uh actually hmm. 
yeah okay i kind of messed this up so v weight class one we'll just say um weight class selector one weight class selector one okay so i'm gonna put that where is that at v weight class selector one so so the this is the ui output is the the name of the actual selector object and then v weight class one is the actual input variable it's a little confusing but uh it's not too bad you just kind of get it have to get used to it so label equals um weight class and then we get a choices thing choice uh, choice oh, choices and in this case we actually don't need to make this really a reactive thing however i think it's a good practice to do it so we'll just say weight class one df df cre oh, create elo data input vk1 weight class one i spell df in this case our choices need to be like uh uh the weight classes so we're going to say select weight class distinct then we'll just say arrange by weight class just so it'll put it out in a in a in a in a distinctive order All right so choices equals this pretty simple let's look at it so we basically give it a list of weight classes and then that's what we have for available and we have you see that we have our available things um i kind of don't like how it drips off like that but maybe i can put this above it and it'll it'll, it'll fix it a little bit so we're gonna do that uh yeah let's do uh that 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 Cool, so we have this, you know, not great, but if we notice something, it's not really filtering anything, right? Because that way, we have to, because we actually have to put this into it now. Okay, so we have to remember our weight class is an input ID weight class. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna say create uh, create uh, ELO data. In this case, we're gonna say filter weight class equals input, input, boom. The weight class one right here top five fighters filter weight cla uh, class equals input boom pipe that in eo distribution we'll say eo dist and we'll, we'll just put we'll in here filter weight class equals input boom let's see what it does Actually, I think I forgot, did I forget the table? There we go. So what, what, what do we see here? It's a little bit different, right? Hope it's a little different. Let me see here. I think the, the, this one's a little, is, is not right. Yeah, the top five fighters is not right. So we'll just say filter weight class equals input, boom. That way we don't have to deal with that. Okay. Because I'm just changing the source data. I think most of the fil filtering I'll just put in to that, that central area. Okay, this looks much better. You can see how that it's less dense, right? Because we're in bantam weight. We can go to catch weight. Because I, I actually was Googling catch weight. Catch weight is kind of like a made up weight class where people kind of decide they weight arbitrarily. That suits both fighters. So that's why the, there's not a lot. Okay, so then we can do middle weight, middle weight distribution. We also change K. See how the K ranges change, right? Pretty cool. So yeah, that's like that's some pretty good stuff right here. Um, I think one thing that I might do is, ah oh man, I kind of want to use the cable package and kind of tweak this table, but I really don't know it very well. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys deal with that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is the uh, the head to head, and I think I talked about this last week where I was saying like, oh, it'd be cool if you could select like, you know, a fighter, fighter right, fighter right here, fighter right there, and then have their probabilities output it right there, right? That makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, and we could filter by weight class, right? So what we're kind of doing is kind of a little little complicated, right? Um, if you think about it, it's, it's a simple idea, right? Weight class, if we have a weight class, then the fighter is available in the fighter t in the fighter filters should only be in that weight class. And when we choose a fighter in one tab, 
the other fighter or the opponent tab can't contain that fighter, right? So what we're going to have to do is some filtering of the filtering um, where each, each actual slicer or filter has to affect each other, okay? And that's actually not too hard. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to have to create a, uh, a, a, what is it called? A UI output, basically, a UI output. So first, that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to say is, uh, let's see here. How, how should we do this? Let's just do UI, oops, box, UI output. Actually, scratch that. We're going to put this into a, a row. So we know it'll be in, in one single row. So that way, um, the opponent and the fighter will be sitting on the same row, and we know it'll be in the same row, okay? So UI output, and we'll say fighter one selector, and then box UI output opponent um, selector. I don't know why it's a fighter one. We don't need, we don't need to do with that. Fighter selector, opponent selector. Okay. So we have those two things. Let's see if it actually does anything. It shouldn't do anything to be honest. Uh, yep. Yeah, we got that. And then head to head, nothing here, but we have something starting. Cool. Mm okay. Mm okay. So I'm going to put these guys down. Okay. Oh, oh. I'm just going to, you know, Okay, so now what we're gonna do is output fighter, so, oh, fighter selector render table, a uh, render render UI. Oh uh, no no yeah render UI. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. 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 So our first we're going to assume everyone's going to choose a fighter first. Okay. So that'll be fine. Um, Hmm. Actually, now that I think about it. No, we're, we'll, we'll just do it. We'll do it. So our, uh, select, we're going to do a select input, which will be when, you know, those like drop pull down tabs, select input. So input, input ID equals V fight. Oh, fighter to, uh, fighter, t fighter, V fighter, fighter two, because it's on the second tab. I don't think we actually used a V other one. Actually, we'll say V fighter. That'll be fine. And then our, our label is, um, fighter. And our choices is this, right? So we're going to say, uh, um, oh, what is it? Create the, uh, create, create EO, EO data. Oops, fighter. So we'll say, oops, fighter, you fighter selector, df, create your data input vk. And then this, in this case, we're actually gonna use a second one because we, we have to bring in another one. Um, so that's why I was kind of getting a little um, bogged into something. So let's say fluid row. Um, let's, let's just, let's just create, let's create the, uh, this, the, uh, the, the V was it the slider, input, the slider input, Jesus. So slider input, uh, box slider input, uh, was it, uh, wait, no, it's a slider input. Um, V K to label, label equals K for ELO min equals one max equals 100 value equals 20. I think we probably could just replicate, like, copy this thing in, but I'm not sure. And honestly, I don't really feel like um, messing it up, right? Um, so we got that. V equals K2, right? And then fighter selector DF, uh, select fighter, uh, distinct arrange by fighter fighter cool so what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this in, paste that guy in call it a day fighter selector df choice equals fighter selector df okay let's run this and see what it does um seeing some errors for some reason oh no we got it okay so we have this right 
one thing that we also have to add, we also have to add is the, the weight class selector. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll just do that. Um, we know that the weight class selector is going to be uh, on top of the slider input. So box, uh, UI output weight class selector, oops, weight class selector to, okay. To be honest, I don't think we need, yeah, we don't really need to do this for the weight classes. It can just be distinct, um, but we're just gonna keep it just in case we wanna do anything crazy. So I'm gonna do this, uh, do that. Weight selector two, B O K K two, two, um, and by bow. Okay. So we gotta make sure it's that dope. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to say select by filter, weight, weight, weight class equals input, input, weight class two, boom. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what's going on. Aaron Phillips, does that make any sense? Let's do, I think the best way is we just do women's catch weight. Those are all female names. It seems like it's working. That's really good. Okay. So we have our fighter selector right here, but now we need to do the opponent selector. Okay. Um, and the opponent selector has not been made yet. What? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do the opponent selector. So, output opponent selector, render, render UI. So what's great, why we did the actual render UI instead of just um, these select inputs is now that we have these in the actual server functions, they can actually now filter each other with the, da with the data sets. What does this mean? It means what we can do is we can do this. We can just copy and paste this thing in. It's the same thing. However, what we're also gonna add is and and fighter does not does not equal uh, v input v fighter input v fighter, and that'll choose uh, a fighter that is not available. So like if if the uh, the fighter is selected, then it won't be available in the data set that's it's uh, producing for the choices. Okay, so let's run this and see if it's working. Okay. Argument is of length of zero. What's going on here? Fighter v fighter v input v da 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 da. What's going on here? Weight class and fighter does not equal to fighter. What's going on here? Input v fighter. Uh, let's see here. Do I have to do double ands? Fuck. Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna put this in another filter. Whatever. Not the most efficient, but oops. But we don't really care that much. Uh, input um v fighter. Let's see if that runs. Argument is a length zero. What's going on here? Fighter selected B now. Oh, that's why. Oops, I forgot to do the select input. Select input, input V opponent. Uh, opponent. And we'll, we'll say uh, opponent selector DF. Okay. That's why, because what, it, what it's saying is like, oh, you're not returning an actual object that we're expecting you to do. Boom. So we have that. If I do, why is this thing not in the, uh, the thingy? It should be next to each other. We might have to do something, but we'll worry about that later. So let's, let's first make sure it's working. So Bantamweight, Alexis Davis. Is Alexis Davis open up, open or available for that one? She is not. So we have these fighter selectors done. We have our we have our fighter and opponent selectors done. 
Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste this in there. I'm gonna convince these guys. Okay, sweet. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some tweaking. I'm not sure why this is doing this right now. Hmm. Fluid row. Not sure. Oh well. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another fluid row. <laughs> and in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add now cards. Okay. What we need to do is um, what's cool about um, shiny dashboard, let me do a shiny dash shiny dashboard. A shiny dashboard comes with um, some cool cards, um, which are really helpful for uh, for dashboards. So let me see here, appearance, uh, let's see here. Get started, let's see here. Yeah, so they have these little, um, wait, where is it? They have these things, little info boxes. And these are nice little summary things that we can add onto it, which can kind of show out like, oh, like, uh, whoever, like Henry Cejudo's probability right there, you know? So it seems like a pretty easy way to do it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say box, oops, box. Uh, actually we'll, we'll put this underneath it. Actually we'll say fluid row box value, whoa, box, whoa, whoa, value box. Output, yep. And then box value output value what? Value box. Oops. Jeez, I'm I'm extremely um I, I don't know why, but this diet soda's making me burp a little bit. Okay, so and we'll say fighter card and we'll say uh uh op opponent card. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start adding to these cards. So we'll say output fighter card. Uh, was it a render value box? What is it? Value box. Uh, what is it? Uh, let's see. Let me, let me look it up. Value box. Oh, it's yeah. Render, render, va render value box. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, we're going to use our create ELO data. So we'll say fighter card DF input VK2. And then we'll, we'll kind of copy this guy and we'll say, uh, what is it? Opponent, opponent card. And then say, uh, uh card DF and then for this we'll say uh, ooh actually we don't even need uh, yeah no we we have to do that we don't actually have to do this so what we have to do is since we're gonna try to predict the probabilities of it we're gonna have to create an actual elo object okay so this is uh, elo dot run 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 and say winner to fighter uh, plus opponent K equals input V K two data equals ELO DF call this ELO because we have to create uh, probabilities. We actually have to um, create an ELO object. Um, so that way we just have to specify the, the, the K value. And finally we, we can do this. So we can do the, uh, 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 was it fighter prob equals, and we say data frame. Oh man. Data frame fighter equals in oh input uh, was it v fighter opponent equals input v uh, opponent okay and then what we're gonna do is predict and we'll oh, predict and we'll give it the evil object and do that and the prediction. Uh, and we'll, we'll just do that. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. In this case, since we want the, uh, the opponent's prob, we need to switch fighter and opponent around. 
Okay, so boom, and then boom, right? Because they're just switched around, and we'll get the same probability. And we can always do a sanity check. Okay, so, so now that we have the prob, uh, the prob, the fighter probabilities, we can do a value card. Uh, what is it? So value box, and then value equals paste. We'll just say paste fighter. Oops, fighter. Uh, prob and then we'll say uh, uh, what is it um, oh yeah the, per the percent sign and yeah um, yeah that'll be our value oh we get this that's I set set equals boom, boom and we'll say uh, subtitle equals paste and then we'll say input v fighter I gotta make sure it's input v fighter um, fighter selector, where is it? Fighter, yeah, input, V fighter, yep, okay. So, input is gonna be C, we're gonna say, okay, input is the fighter's name, and we're gonna say fighter probability set equal boom, boom. And we'll just say, since the fighter will always be blue, we'll say the fighter card will be blue. Um, and then one thing that I was, I was looking up is um, we can do the uh, the hand uh, rock thing, and that'll that'll basically do what we're what we wanted to do. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Um, opponent prob. So opponent prob input v. Uh, uh, opponent color will be red. Cool. So we have these things. Let's see if it works. Nope. This works obviously. Fighter. Sweet. So we have these things. What we note is, okay, we need to change this into a, uh, we kind of have to round this, right? We got to multiply it by 100 and then round. And in this case, I want just like 51, no decimals, no frills. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say 100 times, and we'll say round, round this value to zero decimal places. And we'll do the same thing to this. Round this to zero decimal places. Cool. Uh, spelled round wrong. Round, boom, oh. Boom. We got that. So we have our probabilities. Blue and red corner. Our opponents, Aaron and Phillips. We can also change the uh, the people, so we can choose like, oh, we want to look at women's bantamweight. We want to look at, um, uh, let's see, Amanda Nunes versus, say, let's see, uh, where's like Irene Aldana, stuff like that. We also change the K, um, and see how it's sensi how the sensitivity changes it. One thing I gotta do is I want to fix this thing, and then we'll just call it a day. So I'm going to fix it and say, and let's find out what's going on here. I'm honestly not sure why this is doing this for the fights. Interesting. Oh, there you go. Boop. Okay. Okay. So we're going to hit that. And we finally have it. Finally have it. So yeah, this is just a short Tidy Tuesday video, but we finished the dashboard uh, and with a uh, with a shiny dashboard, and it's pretty quick. Only took an hour, and yeah. Um, let's do a simulation. So let's see. Uh, uh, women's what? Women's bantamweight. Uh, Amanda Nunez, and let's see. Uh, let's see if is Felicia Spencer here. No, it is. Where's the Holly? Holly home. 60% probability, 40% probability. Pretty cool stuff. We can also see how um, we can see the distributions of these guys and kind of show the uh, change in ELO, with change in ELO scores and um, with the change in K. So yeah, I'll see you guys next week and uh, tidy on.